Hello guys, I'm Ali Mulkarim and today I'm going to present to you database first beyond the basics as fast as possible. Today we're going to start where we left off in our previous session. So prerequisites for this session. You have to know C-sharp, object-oriented programming and so on and especially SP.NET MVC. It's not a beginner session and so on. So topics. We're going to solve the previous problem. We're going to create new problems and then solve it. We'll talk about the benefits of database first. We'll talk about database view concept and how to use it inside in our project. And we'll see how to create a simple stored procedure and benefits of it as well. And how to use that stored procedure in our project. All of these we'll try to cover as fast as possible. I have opened our previous project. If you want to see the database, you haven't changed from our last session. So we have these tables, we have these properties. Properties. If you see in our model, we have a problem referring to that if we change any context or anything, the model contact model uh, entity files or class files have been replaced or regenerated. So we have to come up with a solution. The solution is first go to your properties and then change the update transformation related to fall. That's your first thing. Next, what you should do is go any of the folder and then drag your files and the drag your files means drag the person, the classes that has been related to your uh, work to this and then make a folder give a name that you like okay so we have our files now if we try to include that folder we'll be successful but if you try to build it you'll be failed now the next task is to delete those contacts now to check that if those are generated you just drag and drop and save it if those doesn't generate that means you are fine so let's build it we have an error with sys diagram tools and to solve that problem we're going to remove that sys diagram from our entity that's it so let's try to build it again okay so we're having another error and if we just go to our context this is our context so here if you just remove this one so now if we build it again we'll be successful so let's try it in in the browser so here is the project where we left off so we have successfully run from our custom code so if you now add a property to your code let's say display name now if we rebuild it again because we're running on without debugging we'll see that in the first name, the name is going to be changed. First name is changed, last name is changed, and date of birth. So now, if you, if you add or change in the context like this, it's not going to replace your person. So that's it. You have your annotations with the database first approach, but you're not uh, removing anything if, it, if you change on the model. So next thing is, let's say I add something to the database. So let me quickly add something to my database. So I'm in my SQL Server Management Studio. If I connect to the local DB version 11, I'll see my database here. So if I go into my database diagram and try to add a new field, let's say address, address, it should be varchar. I have seen developers always put nvarchar without knowing that what it does. So if you think about it, in maximum cases, you do not want user to entry from Unicode characters. So if you don't want that, there is no need to have a nvarchar because nvarchar is twice the size as varchar. So you should be careful about that. But if the client wants that you should be able to entry a Unicode character, then you should put nvarchar. So other than that, try to optimize it. So if I try to save it as a not null, so I'll be fail because uh, the data will be not null and it will be complaining. So for simplicity, I'm going to choose the allow now. 
So it's a var char. So if a var char have a null, it will be only two bytes. But if you put one character or let's anything other than null in a var char, it will be a 50 character size. So it should be, um, if you have a calculator, it should be like uh, 50 into eight bits. So four, 400 bits and if you add a two bytes pointer to it, so two means 60, 16, so it should be uh, 416 for this one uh, address column. So you have to think about the sizes when you are designing databases. And I have seen the uh, developers who try to, with, try to develop with the code first, they don't think about those. And in the end result, their database become very unoptimized and the end result is very dangerous. So that's why I really want to point out so these are the things that I think that a database designer could do in the design time to minimize the design errors. Okay, so now that I have my table updated, so let me add that table or property in my model context. I just update it, you will see the address is added. And now what you should do is add a property manually to this class, that's one way to go. But if you have more properties, let's say uh, 10 or 12 or let's say five, you don't want to write those manually. So what you want to do is get an advantage of automation. So you can have the automation from this add generated item. There you go to the data and select generator, database context generator, whatever you like. And then it's going to create some context as before but this time you're going to copy paste the properties from the person to your person class just select and add that property in your person so I'm in the person class now my job is to delete those 2d files and these will remove the duplicate CS files and now I'll be happy so now you don't have the view generated so you have to really manually add these things to the view you have to do it if you're doing uh, code first operation it would be same same so there is nothing that we could robust the operation so let's say in the create we're going to add the field for our address okay so done so if we just build it you'll see that there is an address column but I want the address column to be multi-line so I want a text area so to do that I just go to my address so if I add a multi-line attribute and if I build it again and if I refresh it you will see that I have a multi-line property so so far we're getting the best of both worlds we're getting the feature of code first and we're having the fun of database first designing where we could rapidly design many many databases but one of the difference between the database first and code first is you could actually work with the uh, production data so let's say you, you have an uh, application running for five years and the client wants you to design that application from what you, they have and one of the fun functionality or one of the benefits you could get from the database first is this and another one about the database first is that you cannot use views database views with code first that's a dead end but you could use views easily as tables from database first approach and the stored procedure calling is very easy however you can still call stored procedures from code first approach but if I show you the approach now it will be much more easier and you'll see that how easy it is before moving on to the stored procedure I'm going to show you how to create a view first so click right click on the views and click on new view and then select the tables that you want to display so in my case I want to display the em employee as the person and a combination of designation something like that so next thing you should know that what's the upsides and downsides of view so for the upsides it makes your codes clean and clean means that in a SQL query if you want to join these three you have to include in the link 
something like that. It's cleaner, but you have to write it on and on. And in the link, they have to join it programmatically and search goes and they have to search in the object model and then uh, add those items together. So it's very costly. One of the great thing of running the code inside the database is that it's very fast and it's fast because it's ACID compliant. ACID compliant. So A for atomic, C for consistency and I for isolation. And that's the property that makes the database very efficient and very fast. Isolated means that isolated means that let's say I'm really running uh, let's say 10 operations on a database and isolation means none of those really depend on one another if they don't depend on one another they do not make each other slow so that's the best part of the database but if you're running but there is no magic but still database programming is a lot more faster than your traditional programming c-sharp programming or your php programming so try to run the code inside the database. You will have better results. So the downside is also important. So the downside is that if you run a code inside the database, you cannot really go and modify in next or check out the errors because it's inside the database. So error detection is hard. So you'll be fine unless you are not removing any column or changing any column name. So uless you do that, either, de uh, either detection will not be a problem. Another problem that you might run into when you are using views that sometimes your entity model do not add the view if you do not have a primary key. So that's a downside from uh, entity framework, but it's, it still exists. So, let me show you how you can get all the designated things that you want, all the desired things that you want. So I'm going to use the all from the employee because I want all the employee's information. Plus, what I want is first name, last name, date of birth, and address. And from the uh, designation, I want those as well. So if I just view it, you will find that I have these column and values from all of those tables so which is very much robust than using the uh, include inside the link or inside the c-sharp so let me save that I try to have a convention name where I could find my views with the view name because uh, view will be act as a table so inside the entity framework should go to entity model and use the update database and this time select this view so if you have multiple views it will add it so again to have the best results add the code generation now it's a table that is added so you have to directly copy paste the class file to your folder and then include that inside the project and then add the class name inside your context. Those three things you have to do if you create a new table, that's it. So now if I want to see the employees in the employees, so if I go to the employees, you'll see that I have a view like this where I don't have any last name na last name or addresses of the employee. So let's say I want to see the see those so what I can do is use the link and for that purpose I'm going to use my view con uh, employee controller inside the employee controller I'm going to remove those okay so I forgot to really remove the TT files so if you do not remove the TT files you'll have error inside your code remove those try to build it and it'll be fine so now I really want to remove those include and Instead of the include, what I really want is use the my view. Once you use the views, once you change the model type, you have to change the model type inside your view as well. So this time our all view should be entity model dot view employee. So we have to do it for all the three things. So let's say I want to improve what only the index view. So inside the index, 
Let me add a few more properties. But there is a downside that if you're using this type of things and there is no record, you will be having an error. To solve that, what you can do is write an if-else statement. For the whole table, you have test, so there is a less chance that you'll fail. So it's a method. Let's say we want to display other uh, fields like address. This one should be address. And this one should be designation. Okay, so inside that, yeah, you have the entity employees name uh, however if you want to edit the person name from the person field you could use like this you could really make HTML link and in the edit we also want to have some route values controller name route values uh, next thing we want to know this one so in here we want to give a person ID and we don't want this display that's it so if we again build it so here I am inside my employees index so if I click on the first name I'll see an error because we haven't named it as people we named it as a person but if you see the controller it's people so that's a mistake so let me just solve it very quick it should be people we save it and refresh the page if you go to the link you'll see that it's people if you click on it you can edit it now so let's say it's David to something like that we can exactly see that our names has been really replaced very quickly so that's how you can maintain your uh, database first application so uh, another thing that you could really do is make a short procedure and another problem could arise let's say I add a table that's a new table but I'm adding some relationships so my new table should be new table ID so we have the relation now so since we updated database let me update the model if you update it you have to add the table not just diagram okay so table is added the relationships should be modified as well so if I add a generated code you will see that I have TT files and inside that if I just go I will see that there is a new table class so add that class but this time the problem is that we have added some relationships so if you just go to the person you will see that a new new table information has been added so first what you should do is copy that new table information inside your person person that's the first thing and the next thing add this new table new information inside your person constructor so since you're done just remove those and let's say uh, I add that table so after adding that you should build successful after you have a successful build, the first thing you should try is creating a controller. Any controller will do the effect. If you can successfully make any controller, that means that whatever changes you made so far 
uh, after the entity changes is synced with your custom changes. So let me just create a new controller. So I'm successful. That means whatever changes I made with my custom modification in those classes are synced with my model. However, if you fail to generate, you should check the steps that I did and what you did wrong. Or if you have any questions, you could still email me with your screenshot that whatever you are doing, I will be very helpful and I will get back to you. And another thing, uh, if you are failed to generate because of the view, because sometimes it complains that view doesn't have any key. If that happens, then add a manual key with your any uh, column, which is unique. So employee name would be unique here. So that's it. So now we're going to uh, test our stored procedure thing. So how, how we could import a stored procedure from SQL Server or the database to our uh, code. To do that, I am here in my uh, database with SQL Server Management Studio go to programmatic and then create a new stored procedure so when you click on the create you will have a template like this to modify the template what you should do is control shift and m so here the key is also written control shift and m so if you do that you have an option like that so write your name date and so on so our procedure would be let's say test employees view something like that so parameter name this one should be the parameter name so it should be search for employee let's say voucher 30 so the type should be same as your employee name uh, or else it will complain that it cannot uh, compare or something like that so data types should be same so it's 30 it should be 30 as well okay so let me write a simple query however note that uh, this query doesn't affect if you run it from a stored procedure or you write it from let's say entity framework the difference will make when you have a query like this let's say you have 1 million data and you load those 1 million data using let's say entity framework so this 1 million data become 1 million 1 million entity objects there is a conversion cost right from the database it's converting to objects means your classes person classes and so on and lists so there is a huge memory cost and then you process it process it and then save it back to the database in this process there will be a huge difference if you use the stored procedure so if you have a 1 million data and if you use stored procedure it will you have to use cursor the idea is cursor so if you have something to do with it you uh, google for cursor or if you can't find it email me i will get back to you so there is something called cursor cursor is let's say 10 times slower than a regular select query that's fine that process may be one you can guess that that's 500 times slower than uh, this process so cursor is 10 times slower than a regular select query inside database but it's still faster than what what you are going to do with the entity framework or something like that so what you could do use cursor select your data data and process it and save it inside the database it will be huge fast Trust me. OK, so we're here to make a simple query. So let's say we're selecting from view, employee view. And we're selecting based on the first name. First name, let's say like. It's not the best query you've ever written. But I think for the demo purposes, it will work. <laughs> so something like that I've written. So if now I save it. Oh, sorry execute it if I now refresh inside my stored procedure I'll have a stored procedure so now uh, if I try to run the stored procedure I go there and go to the execute and if I okay parameter 2 should be removed okay so uh, it should not be saved so you have to write alter and execute now if you just go to modi uh, sorry not modify execute if you write let's say David you'll see that one result is written. 
return. So there is another thing when you run a stored procedure that it returns a return value. So most of the time when we uh, query some uh, complex data and uh, the most developers return a single value. So let's say you got a top query. Let's say you did a top query where every result will be single. So what you could do if you have multiple variables, you could write those variable names with your column name. So those variable names will get your column name values. The idea is, let's say you have a return result. Let's say it's a number and we're saying it that it's one. So execute it. So if I now execute it again, let's see with David, I will have a return value of one. That's fine. But in entity framework generating method, you will see also a return value type. But if you use that return value to expect some results, you will be very frustrated because it doesn't return any value inside the entity framework model. So if you use the entity, mod entity model generator and uh, generate that stored procedure from this query, and if you're expecting that return value, you will be really amazed that you didn't get it. So the idea is if you have to return some value, what you can do, you use the select again. So whatever the last select statement is, you will get it. So what you can do is, let's say, I'm getting one, so you could really name it as return custom value or whatever, return value will be as fine. So whatever you name it, let's say I have altered the query and let's execute it with David. David, and as you can see that the regular return result is zero, but return custom is one. So. Uh, when you are dealing with entity framework model generating, you should always use something like that select a statement. Other, otherwise, you'll not get the expected result. So for our case, we just want this uh, entity result return. So I'm inside Visual Studio in my model, entity model. So here you click and click on the update from database. And inside that, if you go, you'll see the short procedure that we have just created. So hit on finish. Now, if you just click on properties, you'll see inside the model, there is a stored procedure called test employees. And at the same time, it also creates a function and also create a type, complex type called test employee result. You could really change that by going to, sorry, by clicking on the function import, you could really change that, but I suggest you not to. If you want, you could change the name, or you could also really uh, see the complex type that what it is or what it's going to return. You could also create a new one if you like, but I suggest whatever it is, keep it as it is. It's the best one. Now, if you just click, right click, and select Add Code Generation, and select EF6, create a database context from T4 templating, we'll see that there is a test employee view result. To get that, we'll go inside, and we'll copy and paste it inside this folder. Now, the next things are very simple. You have to go through the context, and add the context method since you are using a stored procedure, it will create a method and copy that method inside your context. That's it. So there will be no, uh, let's say, join like this. There will be a method. So now the step is delete those. So we're done, but we have to import that in our project. So now what we want to do is go to new table uh, controller, new table, and rather than uh, displaying the new table result, we're going to show the stored procedure result. So it will expect for a person to search for, let's say David. So now we have to modify our views or view models, views model information to display those data. So I will do for the one and you will try the rest as your assignment. So inside the new, I'm going to modify, pause the video and modify the index CSHTML. So I have changed the model from test view result and add the first name only. Let's add the last name as well. You could do really very complex things with a short procedure and it's very fast as we have told. So 
let me just show you the view in the browser so if I go to the new tables slash index or new tables only I'll see that the David is here so let's say we add another employee let's add an employee first we have to add a people or person so let's say the person is also David 2 last name is David something 111 address something like that so let's next next thing add an employee so David 2 manager something like that save so we have two Davids so if I go to new table I'll see two Davids so that's it so far we have got into many problems not only one and finally we have came up with solutions for this problem problems and you have seen many steps to uh, change the database and to ease your pain we are currently making a product because we make products for developers and the product name is EFSync uh, our developers are working with it so if you think we are cool you can also join us it's free and it's going to be open source and if you have any question or any feedback you could mail me alim at developers organismcom if you want to get any quotation about any product you could get it info at developers organismcom if you think we are cool and if you want to contribute with us then you could send your resume jobs at developers organismcom if you like our work you could go to fb.com slash developers organism and give a thumbs up to our page this video is sponsored by our group you can find the link here if you click here you could go to the group page and join us to stay tuned if you like this video hit a thumbs up if you don't like it give a thumbs down but don't forget to subscribe thank you